close your eyes, let your spirit start to soar, and you'll live like you've never lived before. In the illustrious words of Robin Archer, Australian artist, performer, and activist, we must all have the courage to sing and the courage to sing praises. Singing is an even more vulnerable act than speaking. We don't like to sing in public because we are afraid of being judged. And we don't like to speak our truth because we are afraid of being judged. Many years ago, I had the opportunity to be put forward uh, for a role as an executive assistant for an iconic Australian company. The company were looking for someone creative and out of the box because there were lots of in-house events to organise. And in order to test our mettle, the company decided that all of the candidates should prepare a 15-minute presentation speaking about themselves. 15 minutes talking about myself. And then the penny dropped. I had returned to corporate work after a period of a few years acting, directing and producing theatre. Uh, surely I could manage 15 minutes. I was really used to auditioning, and after all, what was this but another audition? And what do you do when you go to an audition? Well, you sing, of course. I walked into that room, and in front of the managing director, HR director, and six other people, I sang my introduction to me, complete with M.M. Lion fanfare backing track. <laughs> they listened, a little bit shocked, <laughs> and open-mouthed, they applauded, and I got the job. Vulnerability will feel different for everyone. For me, it's about a willingness to show up with courage and resilience and receive whatever judgment might come my way. You see, when you're willing to receive that judgment, you create the space for something greater to show up. And if you're not willing to receive judgment, well, then you put up walls, which means that the magic can't arrive. When you also, receiving praise is also an act of vulnerability. Because when it's genuine, it means that that person has looked deep into the truth of who you are. And it means that they are able to see something that perhaps you cannot. Just like the characters in A Chorus Line, when you speak your truth, you access your authentic self. And like these characters, they had to step up to the line, they had to show up, and they had to share their authentic self through the power of personal story. What if receiving that kind of judgment, being willing to show up as yourself, allows you to get that job? What if it made you, receiving judgment made you a million dollars? Would you be willing to receive judgment then. Authenticity, I'm having trouble with that now. <laughs> Authenticity is your values made visible. And when we are willing to be our authentic self, it allows us to embrace every single aspect of who we are, regardless of our imperfections. We have a saying in Australia, Warts and all. And you know, I even used that very term when I spoke to that interview. I said, this is who I am, warts and all. I am imperfect, I'm a little bit crazy, I'm theatrical, I'm colourful, and I'm happy in my own skin. 
And if you don't like who I am, well, you know, that's actually okay with me. It means that I'm not a good fit for you. And it means that I would need to diminish who I am in order to work with you. And that doesn't work for me. Being yourself is the ultimate vulnerability in a world that values image over authenticity. In the musical Cats, can I have a show of hands, those of you who know the musical Cats? Ooh, awesome. <laughs> the character of Grisabella shows up and she's old and ragged and she's invisible. The other cats don't like her because she's different. She doesn't look the same as them. And so they ignore her and make her an outcast. When the leader of the cat tribe, Deuteronomy, decides that he is going to give out an extra life, well, all of the other cats go completely berserk, trying to prove that they are worthy and deserving of such an honour. And then Grisabella shows up and she says, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to prove that I am worthy of this honour. All I've got is myself. I have nothing to offer you except myself. And Deuteronomy, in his wisdom, is able to look beyond that surface and is able then to see her deep truth and her fierce determination and ultimately gives her the extra life. When we are vulnerable, it creates an impact that invites people in. When you're willing to be vulnerable, it creates a world that gives us a deeper connection that no amount of uh, business cards or advertising or fabulous Insta stories, as we saw earlier, will actually help you achieve. When we are completely vulnerable, it creates a space of invitation. In the musical Phantom of the Opera, the phantom wears a mask. It is a mask of mystique and power. And throughout that, the musical, he seduces the beautiful young ingenue, Christine, with the power of his voice and mystique. But when Christine rips off that mask, she suddenly is able to see all of him. And it causes him tremendous pain and anguish as his facial disfigurement is exposed. But what happens in that moment is that she's not only able to see the disfigurement, she's able to see all of him, the complete man, she is able to see beyond the mask to the man beneath. She is able to see beyond the disfigurement to the heart and soul of the person beneath. She's able to tap into that wounded child that is hidden underneath the veneer of power. And just like all of us, we imagine that our vulnerability disfigures us. We think that we are less than because we are vulnerable rather than more than. So what if being vulnerable actually gives us a choice to be fully empowered? I invite you to think about that for just a moment. What if being vulnerable allows us the choice to be fully empowered instead. So one of the things that we need to do is to strip away the masks. But what happens is that when we strip away the mask, there are always more underneath. But when we take the opportunity to do that, we have the opportunity to heal. And the more that we heal ourselves and our stories, the more we are capable of healing the world. Healing our stories helps us to heal our engagement and connection with each other and with the world. So, what's your story? 
when you remove those masks, and there are many of them, and it's a lifelong journey of getting rid of those masks, but when you remove them, there's a fascinating thing that happens because when you remove those masks, there is something that is written inside. It is what I call your shadow stories. And these shadow stories are the stories we have not yet healed from. They're the stories we hide from, the stories that we hide from the world because we feel we will be too vulnerable if we share them. So what happens when you take away those layers? What happens? What stories are you hiding from? You see, we are told that... We need to hold our stories close to our hearts. We are told that we need to keep them close and not share them. But what that does, it creates disconnection and separation with each other. When we allow ourselves to share those stories, we have then the power to say, hey, I'm not okay. That's what vulnerability can do for all of us. So when we tap into those stories, when we allow ourselves to really fully understand what is going on with our stories and the way that we tap into them and allowing our vulnerability to shine, we realise that we're able to dismantle the walls within our hearts. Because the interesting thing is, you know, politicians may build walls, but walls begin and end in our hearts. And those physical walls are purely a representation of those walls that are already built in our heart. So if you want to create change in the world, if you want to move and heal those stories and heal the world through your presence, then you need to dismantle your inner walls. One of the ways that you can do that is to be grateful for who you are, where you are, and who and what you are becoming. Every choice we make makes a difference. Just like Jean Valjean in Les Miserables, he is given the choice of changing his life, and it's in the shape of a silver cup. He has the choice to take the cup and continue on his life of crime, or to leave the cup behind and instead turn his face to the sun and move forward into a different life. Visib vulnerability is our new visibility, and it offers us the opportunity to show the world who we truly are. Embracing your authentic power is a courageous choice. And here are some of the ways that you can start to make those choices for yourself. First of all, Make the choice to be grateful for who you are, your imperfections, warts and all. Secondly, the choice to back yourself rather than to doubt yourself. Make the choice to not be who other people expect you to be, but to be who you know yourself to be. And finally, make the choice to show your complete, authentic presence rather than try and present an image um, on Insta or wherever you like to hang out that, and an image that is impossible to maintain. The choice that you make is available to you in every single moment. In 2011... I attended my first ever National Speakers Convention in Australia. The opening speaker asked us to turn to the person behind us and share with them something that we used to do that we no longer did and were sorry that we didn't do that. And to my surprise, I actually shared with the person that I no longer sang. It had been part of my music theatre life for so many years it was part of me, it was my story, it was what made me, me, and yet I no longer sang. I turned back to the stage, and Lisa McKenna smith is walking down the aisle, and she asked for six volunteers to come up on stage and sing one line of a song. 
inexplicably, I find myself on my feet. And then she says, hands up, those of you who would find this a really scary thing to do. And I go, I'm so petrified in that moment at the thought of being chosen that I can't actually even get my hand into the air. And I see Lisa, see me, and see this pathetic attempt of getting my hand in the air, and I just know she is going to pick me. And she does. So I make my way up onto the stage with the other five guinea pigs, uh, volunteers, <laughs> and one by one, we begin to sing a line of a song. And I'm standing there, and I am absolutely petrified. I'm more scared than I have been in 25 years on stage. My knees are shaking, my stomach's churning, my palms are sweaty, my hands are shaking, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't know a single song to sing. I have a vast repertoire and I cannot think of a single song that I can sing. I'm going to look like such an idiot. These are speakers. They're going to laugh at me. I'll be judged. I'll be humiliated. And I watch as one by one the other speakers grab their courage and their vocal cords and sing a line of a song. And then the guy just before me grabs the microphone, and he sings two lines of a gospel song. And he's really good. And then he jumps off the stage. <laughs> what a showman. He lifts off that stage to thunderous applause, and he absolutely deserves it. And then it's my turn. I take the mic. My hand is shaking a lot and I still can't think of a song. And then I do one simple thing. I take one step forward towards the audience, towards my fear, and I say to them, I'm so scared right now. I can't think of a single song to sing. A pause. And then a song drops in. A song sent from the universe. A song sent to save me and help me with my fear. And I say, I've thought of something. If you know the words, please sing along. And I start to sing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. My voice is still wobbling. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And 400 people are singing with me. When you are willing to be visible, when you are willing to see yourself, it allows other people to see you for who you are. And that, my friends, is the art of visibility through vulnerability in action. Thank you.